so first off, for folks kind of getting started with this, um, you know, no matter what it is, what platform it is you're targeting uh, with Pulumi, the, the best thing to do is really to come in, uh, either, you know, jump in onto one of these icons here for the platform you're interested in, or uh, go to getting started and then find the platform that, uh, that you're interested in. And so I'll start with, uh, with Google Cloud Platform. Uh, and so we can come into the uh, instructions here. And the landing page here gives us uh, some of the key things we need to know, some of the examples we can go look at for sort of a full running app sort of very minimal, like, you know, what is the, the simplest possible program look like? Some links over into the ABI documentation uh, for those libraries. And then so finally, kind of some of how we can configure uh, the providers so that we can uh, connect up our deployments to the particular projects and accounts and credentials we want to use to deploy the best. Um, and so this is definitely a good place to kind of get started to orient yourself um, as you're starting up uh, for the first time using uh, any one of these platforms, whether it's AWS, Azure GCP, Kubernetes, OpenStack, or any of the other platforms that we, uh, we support. And so what I'll do is actually come over here and just kind of go to a um, kind of a blank slate and, uh, and just kind of from scratch uh, work through building up uh, an example that uses uh, GKE. Uh, and actually what I'll do is first show, you know, we actually have a, a fully functioning sort of example here of using Google uh, Kubernetes engine. Just click on this. And this uh, is in our examples repo. You know, you can come in here. This is sort of, um, you know, shows how to spin up the, the Google uh, container cluster, how to, uh, um, you know, set up some of the configuration that you might want, and then finally how to deploy some resources into that. So we're largely going to kind of recreate some of these pieces, but if you want to see something that's sort of the finished working example of this, I'd encourage you to kind of go just look at that, uh, look at that example. But just to give you a feel for what this looks like going from zero, uh, I'll, I'll start just from scratch here. And so uh, I can do something like here, uh, Pulumi new. Uh, I'm in this uh, empty folder GKE demo. Uh, actually, I'll just bump up the fonts a little bit here. What I can do is come and uh, pick out the, oops, pick out the GCP TypeScript example to start with. And this will just give me um, uh, a very simple uh, project to deploy on uh, GK. Now, uh, you notice it asks for the GCP project to deploy into. Uh, well, I happen to, in the account that I have credentials for locally on this machine, I happen to have a Pulumi development uh, project. This would be dependent on kind of what projects you already have set up. Uh, and of course, with Pulumi, you can manage your projects as well if you want to create a custom project and then deploy resources into that. Um, but for me, I'm just going to make sure I use an ambient uh, project and one that already exists. When we do that, uh, we'll see that now I get prompted to, you know, with a simple, uh, this template just deploys a GCP storage bucket. I'll just go ahead and say yes to deploy that um, just so that I get something deployed and can, uh, can get a feel for what things look like uh, right away. You'll now notice I have uh, this file as well, which describes this templated uh, project that I created. So I'm just importing the GCP library. I am creating a storage bucket and I'm exporting its URL. And so now we've got, uh, we've got a Google Cloud Storage uh, bucket deployed. As always, I can also come over here uh, and just see you know, uh, what resources are part of this project so that uh, that storage bucket is right here and all the details about it uh, are inside the console. Okay, um, but what we wanted to do instead was actually create a GKE cluster. So let's kind of like play around with this and see uh, what we might wanna do. So the first thing we can do is to just sort of say const uh, cluster equals new. Um, and of course, the, the sort of first thing you can do here is just use the IntelliSense and things to kind of figure out what is available here. And so I type in containers and we see that there's kind of two things. So I type in container and now I've got a cluster here. Uh, so reasonably easy to kind of go and find that. You notice we've recently added examples into our documentation. So those also show up nicely kind of inside, um, inside the tooltips here. Um, so as well as me getting kind of an overview of how this works, I can also see an example of kind of what a real use case of it looks like. And this gives me a good sense of how to use maybe to master off, you know, what kind of values am I supposed to provide there? Um, how do I do node config, that sort of thing. Uh, so let me call this cluster. Uh, and now I'll just go ahead and create this. And so, uh, you know, there's a bunch of different options available here. Uh, one that I'll need to do is set up the zone. Well, actually, you know what I'll do is I'll just show, you know, it looks like I can call this with nothing. Uh, and so I'll just see what I can do with that. I'll say cluster dot D. Um, and so I'll just create that and, and deploy the, the, the cluster ID. Um, and I'll just say Pulumi up to go and deploy this. And it should say that we're going to create this cluster and we're going to delete that bucket that we're no longer using. Um, and so we get kind of exactly what we expect there. You see, notice, of course, this is a desired state model. And so that bucket that's no longer here, we no longer have that in our desired state. And so it's going to get removed uh, as we go and uh, move to that desired state. 
And of course, as usual, I can see the details and see you know what um, uh, what what setting I'm passing here for those different uh, things. So uh, we noticed that it immediately tells us that this cluster uh, cannot determine zone set in the resource and set in provider level zone. And so the only reason I didn't get a static error here is because I could actually have this provided through some ambient configuration. So I could do, you know, polymy config set GCP zone uh, US central 1A. And so I could do this to just set it ambiently. So anything that needs a zone can, can default into that. Um, but I would, instead of doing that, I'll actually provide it uh, directly in line here. Um, and so I'll say US Central 1A, uh, which is uh, one of the zones available in uh, Google, Google Cloud Platform. Now, what I'll do is I'll actually say skip preview here for the next one so that I don't, instead of seeing the preview and then doing the update, since I'm kind of in this just uh, development mode, uh, I'm just going to quickly go through and try the updates every time without looking at the preview. I wouldn't want to do this if I had sort of real infrastructure I cared about deployed. Um, but as I'm just building up my infrastructure and I don't care if, uh, if something goes wrong, um, it's, it's uh, faster to kind of do that in the inner loop. So you notice I get another error that initial node count must be greater than zero. So I can come in here and say initial node count is three. Uh, just try that again. Now we're going to go ahead and, uh, and create uh, that cluster. Um, so uh, one of the nice things, obviously, about uh, um, Google uh, Kubernetes Engine is uh, these things spin up very quickly. So this should only take, I think it takes, you know, two minutes or so. Um, but while we're doing that, let's kind of look at like what uh, the next thing we'll, we'll want to do is. So one of the nice things in Pulumi is that we can, um, as well as creating this GCP resource uh, to create this Kubernetes cluster, we can actually create uh, Kubernetes resources. And so, for example, I can come over here and say, uh, you know, I can say Kubernetes from from Pulumi Kubernetes. And of course, I need to actually make sure I'm going to open up another window here. Uh, and I'll just say npm install Pulumi Kubernetes. Uh, since I'm using uh, JavaScript here and Node, uh, I can just npm install any of the Pulumi libraries to get access to those capabilities. And so in this case, uh, Pulumi Kubernetes gives me access to all of the different APIs available in Kubernetes to use those to deploy things as well. Uh, and so now I have that available and we'll see I've got this Kubernetes here. And so what I want to do is now I want to actually uh, connect up to this Kubernetes cluster that I'm, I'm in the process of creating uh, on GKE. And I want to use that to deploy things into the Kubernetes cluster. And so the first step I need to do is to create a provider. And so I can say new kubernetes.provider. And what this does is it gives me an instance of the Kubernetes provider that is connected up to that cluster. Uh, and so I'll call this GKE. Uh, you see, I can do that using a few different things. I can say, you know, cluster context namespace. Uh, kubeconfig is, is sort of the easiest one to use. Uh, that lets me specify the entire sort of configuration I want uh, for that cluster. Now, one slight challenge is that uh, on GKE, uh, unlike on AKS and, and some of the other platforms, they don't actually expose, um, you know, I, I might, might want to have a kubeconfig available here, but there's nothing, uh, nothing with that name. And so when I stand up this cluster, it doesn't expose as a property the kubeconfig I need to use to access it. And so if we go back to that example uh, that I showed you, uh, it actually had a little solution to that built in. Uh, that's some code here that you know describes I want to manufacture a GKE style kube config, uh, which is sort of a unique uh, style of kube config that, that's hooked up to some of the specific things that GKE does. Um, and so this is, you know, uh, for folks who are familiar with GKE with uh, with Kubernetes generally, this is mostly kind of a normal kube config file, where we've just templated in some of the things that we do get from the Kubernetes cluster. So the uh, the cluster uh, CA certificate, the endpoint of the cluster, and some information about the context. So let me just go and uh, grab that. Um, I'll put it over here. So I'll just say uh, the kube config uh, is this. And I think I didn't call it, I called it cluster. So let's just uh, grab the clusters. Oops. Grab the clusters name, grab the clusters endpoint, and grab the clusters uh, master off. Okay. So now that I've got that, I can do KNS config. Okay. So now I've created this provider, and I can use that to then uh, deploy uh, resources. Um, and so, for example, in this case, uh, I can say const deployment. I'll just try to do the simplest uh, deployment I can to Kubernetes. So now I can say kubernetes.v1.apps.v1. Uh, and again, like we see, the completion list here give me access to sort of seeing everything that's available inside Kubernetes. 
Um, in this case, I'm doing an apps v1 deployment, uh, and I'll call this nginx. Uh, and now I can go and see exactly what I need to specify to uh, define a legal deployment. Um, and so in this case, I wanted to, uh, to provide the, um, the spec uh, for the deployment. Uh, I want to provide the, uh, let's do the template for the deployment, uh, which will be what I want to actually specify. Uh, and in that, I want to um, specify the tags for the deployment. So let me actually uh, do some Nginx labels. So I'll create some labels I can use here. And uh, in the metadata, I want to set the labels to be the Nginx labels. And then uh, I think I need to specify a selector somewhere. Uh, there we go. Selector, and I'll select uh, match labels, nginx labels. Can't spell the word labels. Okay. So, uh, so there we go. I've set up some basic, uh, you know, Kubernetes deployment that uh, you know has a selector which will pick up all of the um, uh, pods with this label, and then a template which will template out each of the pods uh, inside my um, uh, inside my thing. And so I can say, you know, replicas two or something to, to stand up two of those. Uh, and now I want to actually specify the spec for the containers themselves. And so this is where I'll do things like, um, where is this right? Yeah, the pod spec. Okay. Uh, and so inside here, I will uh, do things like containers. Um, and then I'll say image nginx. So we can see what, oh, name, I also need a name. Okay, uh, so pretty quickly, you see there, I got a few of those benefits of you know using the, the IDE, getting those uh, error checking on the fly, getting these tool tips and help. I can see that this containers thing is a, is a pod spec. I can come in here and I can you know uh, click through these things and see exactly all the documentation on what I wanna use. So uh, very handy to be able to do that. Um, but now I've created this deployment, um, which will deploy two copies of the Nginx container uh, into, uh, into my cluster that I just described. Now, uh, we see that that deployment I was doing previously actually succeeded. And so, you know, two minutes, 28 seconds, deploy the, uh, the Kubernetes cluster. And now if I do plumi up dash skip preview, what we should see is we had now also deploy, um, oh, actually there's one thing I wanna, I'm gonna cancel that really quick. One thing I wanna do is make sure that I deploy this into my, um, oops. I want to make sure I provide this into my, uh, what did I call that thing? Ah, provider. Okay. I'll call it KIDS provider. Um, so this provider that I have that is my connection up to Kubernetes, I want to make sure I use that to deploy into. Uh, and I want to do that so that uh, instead of picking up any potential uh, Kubernetes cluster I might uh, have available in my ambient configuration, I want to specify the specific one that I just created within this program. Uh, so let me go ahead and do that. We'll see we created that provider and now we're going and creating uh, the deployment itself. Uh, and so we'll see when the deployment stands up, you know, waiting for the replica set to be marked available. Uh, a few more things happen. Okay, there we go. And now we've actually uh, deployed that. So what we should be able to see is uh, if I come in here, let's open up the Google Cloud Console. We're in, our, uh, we're in that same Pulumi development project that I was just talking about. Let's go over to Kubernetes engine. Look at our clusters. I think this is the one, this is the one in US Central 1A that we just stood up. So I'll go in here. Uh, and now if I, I guess I've got to go look at the workloads on here. Oh, there we go, Nginx. Uh, so this is that, you know, that cluster we just saw. Um, I'm running this Nginx deployment. There's two of two pods that we just described. Um, so we can see all that information about uh, my uh, my cluster that I just stood up and the deployment I did into it. As you see, that's pretty quick, you know, just in, you know, uh, a handful of lines of code here, been able to stand up a Kubernetes cluster and actually deploy some stuff into it all using a single kind of API. And that's, that's a nice thing. You know, I can, of course, now combine that with doing things like, you know, I could, uh, you know, uh, go back and recreate that bucket, for example, and say new gcp.storage.bucket, or I could create a new gcp. Uh, SQL.database. Um, if I want to create a SQL that manage SQL database inside uh, GCP, uh, I could do that. And now I could reference, you know, I could grab the connection strings for that uh, that database and pass them as environment variables into this deployment of, of my application image. Uh, 
Um, it's really easy to combine the best of you know your managed services inside GKE and inside Google uh, Cloud for the, in this example, with uh, kind of that Kubernetes is the is the API for doing my my compute. Um, so I could just complete this example really quick and, and try and get something that uh, I can show up end to end. I'll just say service equals new uh, Kubernetes dot core dot v one dot service. Um, this will give me a, a you know a service endpoint that I can use to target this thing, and so I'll also call this nginx. Uh, and here I want to do spec uh, type. I'll make this a load balancer, uh, and I want to. Uh, Make the selector be what type of selector expect to be? Uh, that's just uh, my nginx labels. Okay. Um, so this will create a load balanced uh, service targeting uh, those labels. And so let me just see what happens if I now go and stand that up. I need ports. And I can go again and I can see, you know, what is ports expecting to be? It's expecting me a service port, which is a port, a required port, and then optional name, node port, protocol, and target port. Um, so in this case, we know that our, our image exposes port 80. So we'll just say, okay. Uh, so I'll just go ahead and do that. I'll just format uh, this so we get nice uh, indentation. And I go ahead and try that one again. This is going to take all the containers that map this nginx label, which is these two above, uh, and just expose port 80 of them uh, on the load balancer that we create. Uh, and so the service is, uh, you know, finding the pods to direct traffic to. Uh, so it's going to find, try to find those two pods matching nginx labels. Now it's attempting to allocate an IP address to the service. Uh, so that's because we have the load balancer. We actually have to uh, you know, allocate a load balancer in a Google Cloud and point that at the service. And you notice that this is a nice thing that we provide this sort of status here. Um, so unlike you know, using kube control or something to deploy these where you just kind of uh, put these, uh, you know, just say throw these at the API server and don't get any feedback about kind of what the status is. Here we're actually giving you status on kind of what are the key steps we need to take to get this thing to be healthy. Um, and giving that feedback uh, immediately here. And so after a few seconds, we see it, uh, it succeeds and gets created. Um, and so now we've actually got that service running inside our cluster with a load balancer um, in Google Cloud uh, connected to it. So I can export sort of the um, endpoint for that uh, nginx IP. Uh, and so I can do service.status. So the service, the status will actually be populated because we wait for it to finish deploying. The service is actually uh, populated with uh, the running status of the, um, of the thing. And so I can say status goes to uh, status dot, and we got load balancer information on there. We got ingress, uh, and then we've got an IP. So I can just do that, uh, run, this, run this again, and we now should now, we need to export that or else it won't work. So that said nothing was changed. This time we are going to export uh, the load balancer ingress IP address uh, off of that service we, we just created. And now we see that it's running at this endpoint. And if I curl that, we should see uh, we get welcome to Nginx. And so uh, there, we've actually stood up a service running. You know, this could have been anything I want. I could have stood up WordPress. I could have connected WordPress up to that managed uh, SQL database. You can imagine taking this further. You can imagine taking your own apps. And if you want to get those apps running really quickly inside, Google Cloud, for example, um, you know, doing this is a, is a simple way to take your app, get it running inside a kind of robust Kubernetes-based environment on Google Cloud, taking advantage of you know, uh, load balancers and, uh, and a variety of other managed services um, as part of that. And again, the key thing is here you have the full flexibility. So you now can go and modify anything you want here. You can modify things you know, in that uh, Kubernetes cluster itself. Uh, so there's lots of different capabilities around uh, you know, configuring the Kubernetes cluster. And you can go and configure any of the, the Kubernetes resources. And so all of that is available from within uh, that one plane there. So, okay, so that was a really simple uh, example using uh, Kubernetes.